Today I'm having a crack at installing the Club Sport S spindles. I did attempt installing the Club Sport S spindles last time when I, when I installed the LCA bushes, but massive failure. I was massively underprepared. Uh, today we're gonna redeem ourselves. We're gonna install them. I'm really confident that it's gonna happen. I've got all the parts, which I'll show you in a sec. I've got all the tools, so I think we're gonna be good to go. So I'm just trying to round up stuff that I need now to do the actual work. Stuff like this, and uh, this, so we need that. Uh, what else do we need? This. Uh, keys, all right. Let's go out to the garage and get all the stuff ready and let's do it. So I've got all the parts here laid out that I think I'm gonna need for today's job. Uh, apart from all the basic stuff, but the specific stuff that I need to get this done. So let's take a look. We've got obviously the two Club Sport S spindles that we're gonna be fitting. We've got the TTS hubs that come on the Club Sport S. Again, I'm not convinced you actually need these. Um, they seem to be identical to the ones that come, but hey, there's nothing wrong with swapping out for new ones anyway. Spline set, which I didn't have last time. And you seem to need these because everything on a Volkswagen seems to use these spline or triple square tools. So we've got that. We've got this thing uh, for the, uh, what do you call it? It'll come back to me, but I need that. And this is the splitter for the, the shock. Goes in there, like that. You turn, bang, open it up so you can actually pull the strut out. I think that bit's still gonna be challenging. That's the bit I'm most, concerned about um, but yeah we'll see how we go so I'm gonna jack the car up and get into it I'll report back later all right so we've had some pretty good success so far and I definitely wouldn't have got this far if it wasn't for these tools that I got uh, especially the um, ball joint splitter. That was the word I was looking for before. So you can see here, empty the hub carrier with the hub. Didn't need to take the hub off because I'm replacing it. Um, so I'm now gonna go and fit up the new hub carrier and pop it on. Cool. All right, so we've actually got one side done now, completely. Gonna have a look here. The wheel is, the wheel. Brakes are back on, it's all talked up. That is the new hub carrier. Um, so yeah, look, halfway there. Check back in later. All right. And we're done. As you can see, I'm back in the car. It's all together. Um, yeah. So time for a little bit of a test drive now to see how we go. More just to make sure, you know, nothing feels wrong because you're really not gonna feel an extra degree of camber just driving around normally, that's for sure. So far, so good. Nothing's.
rattling or bumping or knocking. I'll probably do a spanner check again tomorrow just to make sure everything's tight. I mean, I've gone and talked it all up. But yeah, job well done. It's actually not a difficult job. I don't think it's that overly difficult. You just need the right tools. Right, so you need your, um, your splitter tool for the tie rod ends and the ball joints. So you need that ball joint splitter. So there's one that they, there's one in the workshop manual. It's got a number and stuff. And look, that one's ridiculously expensive. But when you kind of Google that, I found people on like eBay and Amazon and stuff selling one that looks pretty similar. So I grabbed that one and it worked perfectly. Um, even the shock, removing that and putting it back on the second time, once I figured out how to use that little uh, that splitter tool properly, right? I was uh, putting it in there and trying to hold it open, not knowing that you're supposed to actually turn it the turn it the 45 degrees and it actually stays there. The, uh, once I worked it out, it was pretty easy. It just opens it up wide enough to. Um, to slide it on and slide it off pretty easily. Yeah. So I'd say do it. Okay, now it has been a few weeks unfortunately since I originally shot this footage, but here we go, here's the results. Now, as you can see in red, I had just under one degree of negative camber on the stock club sport setup. That's how the car comes from factory, one degree. And there we go, doubled, almost. So just a slither under two degrees camber at the front with OEM parts. Now, a club sport S apparently dials in spot on two degrees. And I think the slight difference for that is I think Club Sport S springs are just a tiny bit lower than Club Sport, um, which is why I've got just slightly less. But hey, look, that's pretty, pretty close. So I'm really excited to get these onto the track and uh, let the lap times do the talking. So I think that'll be the next video that you see in this series, uh, probably won't be for a month or two as the season hasn't started yet. But uh, thanks for watching, and as always, have fun in your cars and keep it on the black stuff.